Well, here with Extension, we're very fortunate to often have the opportunity to meet with lots of uh, authors and famous people. And today, we have a good friend of mine um, with us, Carrie Mendes. Thanks so much, Carrie, for being here. I love it. This is wonderful. And what we'd like to look at is your new book that uh, came out, The Right Size Flower Garden. Tell us, what is this topic about? Well, I think many of us, including myself, felt that our gardens were becoming unmanageable, that we weren't able to keep up with their demands. And so I wanted to write a book that would help people take a fresh look at their gardens and be able to continue to have the beauty and the enjoyment, but reduce the maintenance by at least 50%. So have gardens that fit our changing lifestyles. Um, so we don't feel like we're a slave to our gardens. And a lot of us feel slaves sometimes to our gardens. So I wanted to bring back that first love of how we first garden instead of feeling we've got too much out there. To I can totally with. relate. You know, my gardens seem out of control and yet I'm not, you know, willing yet to give them up. But I realize I can't do as much. Yeah. I just don't have the time, don't have the energy I used to, it seems like. And so I'm um, really looking forward to seeing what's yeah. in here. So what can somebody find in this book for tips? Well, one of, the, one of the things I um, kind of marry with, other, other than making it sustainable for me, and this answers your question, is also I try to bring in much more uh, sustainable practices. So as we adjust our gardens, we need to embrace more low water, low fertilizer, um, low no pesticides, you know, building more natives. So that's it's much, it's as much about us being able to care for our gardens as it is caring for the planet. Having said that, the plants that I talk about in this book all have to be the, you know fit that those traits. I, I can't have water hogs in my gardens. I need to have plants that are uh, pollinator friendly. Uh, ideally, no fertilizer. I mean, so these are the types of plants I'm recommending, um, and also that have low care requirements as far as pruning. You know, so low prune needs, low deadheading for perennials. You know, all the things that we want. We want our gardens to work harder for us than we do for them. And that's what I try to encompass That's a real good point, yeah, because there's so many things. And just by choosing different variety, for instance, different plant, you can have one that requires a lot less maintenance. And, exactly. and also, I assume choosing the right plant for the right place exactly. will go a long way. So I guess there must be some design tips in here, too, how exactly. to choose plants and place them. I talk about a lot of different cool plants, as you say, assessing where you're putting them so they're in the right place right from the get-go. Um, and I also talk about... Um, being more aware, as you say, of plants that work for us in our areas. One of the things that I know I ruffle a lot of feathers with some folks is I basically have walked away from most of the mop head hydrangeas, the big leaf hydrangeas, because they demand so much water mm. and they can be inconsistent bloomers for colder zones. And I'm turning more to panicle hydrangeas and smooth hydrangeas that provide such rewards and beautiful flowers and they're consistent bloomers and low water needs. And so a lot of these I'm doing switcheroos, what we have always gardened with, and now, you know, they're better plants with less work. And well, they, they please us more. Well, I can't wait to look at that. It sounds like a lot, not only for the low maintenance, but also sustainability, which is so yeah. key now. Yeah. Well, great, well, thanks so much for being with us today. Thank and you. thank you for watching today on Across the Fence. For University of Vermont Extension, I'm Leonard Perry.